Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Freelance Friday podcast. Today we are talking about how I quote, get it all done. This topic comes from a comment that I got on a recent vlog, which reads, I'd love to watch a video about how you managed to get so much done. I really wish I had your work ethic at times. I know comparison is the thief of joy and all, but I've been so uninspired lately. So we're going to dive in. We're going to unpack that. I want to share all of my productivity secrets and really how I do keep my business running during the busiest of times. But before we hop into that, I want to take a second to remind you that the doors to the social media management accelerator are closing this weekend. So run, don't walk to the link in the show notes. If you are a freelance or corporate social media manager who is looking to up level your career, learn some advanced strategy and just how to make your clients or your job absolutely love the work that you're doing. This is a course that I only offer once or twice a year. And I'm super, super excited um, to get started and dive in with some of you. My DMs have been blowing up with people saying that they can't wait for class to start and I can't wait either. Let's talk about the productivity thing. And before we hop into the tips and my advice, I do want to take a second to acknowledge that piece about comparison being the thief of joy. And I want to just acknowledge like we all have different lives. We all have different goals. You know, I say that all the time, but I really do mean it. My goals are not yours and vice versa. And my sort of time privileges, if you will, are that my time is really my time. I don't have children. I don't even have a dog or a pet or anything like that. I am able to work a lot. Let's be honest. I also will acknowledge that I am somebody who for better or for worse, because this is definitely not a healthy thing, but like I've never needed to sleep a lot. I can wake up early and stay up late if I need to. Just a few weeks ago, I stayed up until 4 a.m. editing course slides, you know? Doesn't happen all the time, but I know not everybody can do that just naturally. Their bodies will not allow them to do that. So we all have these different things that do influence our output. And that is just a fact of life. And I think it is important that we acknowledge that. I also think it's important that we acknowledge different financial goals. I don't want to say that, you know, you shouldn't watch people who are going aggressively after these different goals and things like that. But it is important to just temper that, to keep that in your mind that they are going to look like they're being super aggressively productive if they're going after a million or billion dollar goal while yours is, you know, $80,000. And that is okay. So I just want to make that a abundantly clear that it's okay. We're all on different paths and we are all crushing it in our own way. But my first secret is not really much of a secret, but I calendar block. I am a big calendar blocker. I'm pretty sure I've done a video about this maybe a couple years ago now. So I'll try to dig that up and link it in the show notes, but I use Google calendar and I simply block time for every single task that I am going to do. The other day I had to reach out to a member of a mastermind that I'm in. So I blocked off a little 30 minute block to be able to do that. And quite simply, if it's not on my calendar, it doesn't get done. So it kind of serves as like a task manager for me, but it also just gives me that time. I mean, it doesn't take 30 minutes to send the voice note. I sent like a text voice note or whatever. It didn't take me 30 minutes to do that, but stopping whatever task I was doing before that, getting unfocused, getting focused on the new task and then getting focused back into the new task. I mean, that really does take about 30 minutes altogether, you know, to really move from task to task like that and to actually record the thing and send it. Right. So that's really important, but I also block off time every single week for kind of those staple priority pieces I have on my calendar to write every single morning for at least an hour. So if nothing else, if I don't get to write any other time during the week, I at least know that I wrote five hours for the week, essentially. Um, same thing for filming days. There are certain days when I have the house to myself and it's nice and quiet and I can do what I want. And so I block off that day for filming and so on. I also try to block my meetings together when I can just to minimize the, you know, the, the, changes in flow, like the shifts in flow, I guess, because meeting Latasha and creative writer, video scripter or video 
subject, video host, whatever, those are all very different people in a way, which sounds creepy and weird, I know, but they are, like they're different energy states that I'm in. So I try to have meetings on just a couple of days out of the week. That also means that I only have to get ready a couple of days out of the week. The rest of the days I can be, you know, just in my sweatpants hanging out. So that's my, my first tip is to calendar block if you don't already. My second tip is to prioritize, which is easier said than done, especially when we have a lot going on. Pretty much all my friends who are business owners or freelancers have told me that they're just like so busy right now. And it happened to me too. I feel like every Q2 this happens. I'm like, how am I so busy in March and April? I don't know what happens, but I feel like something happens. So it's hard right now because there are a lot of moving pieces. There are a lot of things that I'm working on. There are a lot of commitments that I've made. So how do I know which ones are the ones that I need to honor first and foremost? And it really goes back to the video that I just made on Monday, which I'll also link in the show notes. And that is to know your numbers. You have to be able to say, you know what, this thing is making me money. This thing is not, you know, or this one's making me a lot of money. This one's making me a little bit of money. So I need to push this one back. I need to push out the deadline. I need to do less of it. I need to eliminate it, whatever that means for you. Now, I also can say that, of course, not all of my projects make me money. A great example of that is my book. Another great example is, you know, if you're somebody who's maybe working on a course or developing some other type of material like that, that's not going to make you money on day one. I don't write every day and like go to an ATM and pull out money or anything like that. It's going to take me a long time before I ever make any money. And it even long term might not be a huge revenue generator for me. But there's another reason why I'm doing it, which is a more strategic brand reason. So you have to be able to say, okay, what are my projects that are like keeping the lights on that are paying the bills? And then is there a project or two? I personally don't recommend having too many of these kind of passion strategic branding projects because that can get confusing. Is there a project or two that is important for another reason, either just creative fulfillment, or maybe it is like a long-term part of the strategy or whatever the case may be. And then, like I said, put time on the calendar for those important things. For my book, I have time every week. And then for the work that I do, that I actually get paid for, I have time on the calendar for that. But yeah, you have to prioritize. You can't be like, or at least let me say I can't. My working style does not allow me to be doing little bits and bobs here and there. I really need to be like focused on a couple of big priorities. The next thing that's really been helping me be productive over the past, I would say a year and a half or so, you know, has been co-working. I mean, really, I guess throughout my freelance journey, this has been helpful. I used to do this a lot back before, you know, things changed in the world. The world was a different place. I used to do coffee co-working. I would meet up with one of my friends who also freelanced and we just like hang out at a coffee shop or even I would just work by myself at a coffee shop or a co-working space. I used to do that a lot. Obviously things have changed a lot and went very virtual. And for a while I wasn't doing that at all. And I was wondering why I felt like so lost and confused. I mean, obviously there were a lot of reasons for that, uh, but I think that's definitely one of them. And I recently started discovering some virtual ways to co-work and this just helps so much with my productivity. I mean, it's kind of just like peer pressure, right? I mean, if other people are sitting there online with you, you working like you're kind of a jerk if you don't also work I'm not gonna get up and get a snack or scroll on my phone or just stare off into space or whatever if I have these dedicated times and then it also falls into the whole time blocking thing because there are certain co-working sessions that I attend every single week so I know no matter what um you know Monday at 10 a.m or whatever I have this session so I better get to it. There is a website that actually my operations manager, Megan introduced me to, and I am quite liking it. It's called Focusmate. It is free to at least get started. I think you get three sessions per week on the free plan and the paid plan is actually really affordable as well. So you basically get matched up with a random person. It's very much like that one website, uh, Omengle, I think is what it's called, or one of those kind of things where you just get matched up with a random person and you have your camera on, you greet each other, you say, hey, what's up? What are you working on today? And then you just go heads down work. I always mute my mic. Some people keep them on, but that's like, no, that's too personal for me. So I mute my mic and then you just work together and then you regroup at the end. Hey, how'd it go? Did you achieve your goal? Awesome, have a good day. It sounds super weird and I was really nervous about it because I'm like, what if I get some, you know, creepy person? But everyone's been super nice and super respectful. And yeah, it's just the weirdest thing. Like I, I was so 
so in a funk the other day with writing. I don't know, I just couldn't motivate myself to write and I turned on Focus Mate and <laughs> I whipped out like 600 words in 30 minutes, which is pretty good for me. So yeah, I love that. But I also am a part of some other just like self-organized groups as well for certain things, uh, like a writing group I'm a part of and other things like that. You can also just work with a friend. One of my friends who's in a different mastermind, her and I just sometimes get on FaceTime together and like get work done. So whatever that looks like for you, of course you can do like the coffee shop and co-working space thing too. But if you're just looking for something virtual, I highly recommend those resources. And then on a similar note and back to the whole peer pressure note, I, I think it's really important to have some accountability when you're alone and you're working on an island. It's just so easy to get overwhelmed, to get confused, to be working on the wrong things, to be working on nothing. So having different groups or different people who you can go to for genuine accountability in your business, I think is just so incredibly valuable. I'm a part of many. I am a part of, I think three masterminds, two or three masterminds. I'm a part of the Freelance Friday Club, which is my membership community. We do both co-working and we do accountability sessions in that group. So we do two co-working sessions a, a month and then two mastermind sessions per month as well. I'll of course leave the link to the Freelance Friday Club in the show notes if you're interested in joining, but that's pretty much all that the group is. We have a forum and then we have these different uh, co-working and mastermind sessions and the master masterminds are really there for you to hold each other accountable. And of course I participate as well, but it's not like a Q and a session. It's not an ask me anything session. It's there for people to say, Hey, here's what I've been working on this week. Here's what I'm really proud of this week. And here's what I want to achieve next week. I have some questions. I have some roadblocks. Can we work through some of these things together on this call? Then we come back in two weeks and you do the same thing. You report on the success that you had or that you didn't have. And it's just really helpful to have a group of people to you know, to lean on in that way. So I'm also a part of a creative accountability group that I joined just one of my friends from Twitter invited me to this one. And I've just found it super, super valuable and helpful uh, to like encourage each other and stay up to date on what one another is working on in terms of any type of creative work, whether that's a book, a course, um, I don't know, any of the <laughs> videos, any of the things that we work on in that group. So I love that one. And then I'm also a part of, I kind of started a, like a full, time course creators mastermind because I found it's really hard to find other people who are doing courses full time. There's a lot of people who have a course at, on, like on the side or whatever, but uh, yeah, it was really hard for me to find people who were running courses in like an elevated level. So I reached out to some people who I saw were doing really well with their courses and we have been meeting as well. So yeah, I know that it probably sounds like a lot. That's like three hours of my, my week there. I think all of them are bi-weekly though. So I guess it's not that much. It's like an hour and a half a week, but yeah, it's really, really helpful to know like, oh shoot, I have my freelance Friday club call or my creative accountability group call next week. I can't show up and not have done anything because I always show up something about me. I always show up. I understand that people who are joining a group with me are saying no to something to say yes to meeting with me. So I take that seriously and I, I don't want to flake on them. So I'm always going to show up, but <laughs> I definitely don't want to show up with nothing to say. So it really does motivate me to do that. So if you're looking to do something similar, like I said, the Freelance Friday Club is there for you, but you can also just self-organize things on your own. Like I said, one of my favorite groups is one that I just like joined randomly from people that I met on the internet. So if there are people that you look at and you say, okay, they look like they're kind of in a similar season of business as me or, or not. Like, I mean, you don't, even have to be like in the exact same place as each other. I think there's so much value in learning from people who are, you know, a little bit ahead or a little bit behind where you're at as well. Uh, but anyway, if there's anybody that you know that you like, that you feel like you get along with, just ask them, just say, hey, do you wanna like get together and meet on Zoom once in a while and kind of hold each other accountable? You'll be surprised. I think a lot of people are looking for things like that. So just make the ask. There's a book I've recommended in the past, but it's called A Tribe Called Bliss by Lori Harder. She kind of talks about how she created masterminds for herself as well. If you want to read that, it gives like a whole framework and like a structure. I definitely don't follow that to a T, but if you 
are looking for like a step-by-step, it can be a good one for you to check out. And the last one that I wanna talk about is, you know, I hire good people. Now, I will say that I still do a lot in my business. I think sometimes people are surprised when like I'm the one answering the DMs or whatever. Like I don't outsource everything at all. I do a lot in my business still, but I do strategically outsource. And this goes back to the whole prioritization and and all of that. Like I have to make smart decisions with my energy as well. There are certain things in my business that I have to do. Nobody else can do this right here. Of course, other people can record podcasts. Yes. But that would be a huge test. I think to see if somebody else, um, could replace me on my channel that's named after me. Right. So in the state that it exists now for my YouTube and my podcast, I'm the only one who can be the talent on this show. So that is a non-negotiable. I have to make sure that I have enough energy, that I have enough time and resources in my week to be able to shoot these things. But there are pieces of this, like the editing that I can outsource. There are things with emails and things with course production and all of those things that my operations manager can be handling. And I don't need to be so in the weeds with. Another great thing about hiring an amazing team is that I have team meetings and I also feel held quite accountable when I have my team meetings. Uh, you know, just had one with my partnerships manager and it was like, oops, yep, sorry, should have sent this thing to this person. And, you know, it just keeps me on my toes and keeps things moving forward because that it's very easy for things to kind of get lost in the shuffle. So again, I understand that not everyone is in the same place where they are ready to hire a team, but this is where having like an accountability partner can come in handy or, you know, even just outsourcing like one thing off your plate a week. You know, when I talk about outsourcing, by the way, this is like not really related to productivity. I guess it kind of is. I think when I say outsourcing, people think, you know, hire like this full-time person and it has to be this giant, huge thing. You know, the first thing, okay, my hair, this is funny timing. My hair is like itching my face because I'm about to talk about my hair. Um, The first thing that I outsourced, honestly, which didn't feel business related, but was totally helpful to my business was like doing my hair. I know this probably sounds so superficial, but um, anyone with really long hair understands the struggle. Very curly hair knows what I'm talking about. And I was like, I can't spend two and a half hours, three hours blow drying my hair every week. And so I started going to get it done. And then I can read emails while I'm in the chair. I can listen to a podcast or I can do whatever I need to do. So for you, maybe that's the same thing. Maybe that's uh, hiring a babysitter for half a day on Friday so you can get your admin stuff knocked out. Maybe that is hiring somebody to deep clean your home once a month or once a quarter or whatever makes sense financially for you. So I just want to say that because, you know, if you're looking for more productive hours in the day, some of those investments can be very worth it and they don't have to be, you know, hiring like a social media manager or hiring a, you know, I don't know, a virtual assistant or whatever that might be charging you thousands of dollars per month. It might be just buying back a couple hours of your time where you would be spending them doing your hair or watching your kid or cleaning your house or whatever. So do you keep that in mind as well? Just my two cents there. So those are my tips. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to leave me a comment. Let me know what some of your productivity secrets are. Is there anything that you do or that you outsource that has helped you buy back time in your day or week? I'm really curious to know, and I love hearing from you in general. And if you're listening in on the podcast platforms, as always, I'd love it if you left me a review and a rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And last but not least, don't forget to check out the Social Media Management Accelerator. We're gonna be starting April 4th on Monday, and I'm so excited to start teaching and just to get to see some of your faces. And it's gonna be a good time. So thanks for tuning in to this episode. I will see you next Friday for a new one. And I post videos on YouTube on Mondays and Fridays. So you can check me out over there as well. Bye.